Hey, what's up guys and welcome to part 31 of Naruto, the god of shinobi. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual, share it to all of your friends on your social media platform and after this I'm gonna be posting what if Naruto got a new bloodline so stay in tune and enjoy yourself and on my main channel tonight I'll be posting what if Tsunade was Naruto's mother and also, what if Krama gave Naruto a dojutsu? And also, what if Naruto was trained to be a mercenary? So stay in tune and enjoy all the lovely what ifs coming your way. And if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join the anime making family and be a part of the channel. And thank you all for your help and your support. And go ahead and check out my main channel, Anime King, where you can enjoy over 500 lovely what ifs. So thank you for all of your help and your support. Comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying back to all of you. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. So last time we left off, after Naruto found the seal, he ended up unsealing it with his blood. And it then brought back Mito Uzumaki, as Naruto and Kushina were shocked. She end up putting herself in the seal with all of her knowledge of what happened to her clan and right now she is going to help Naruto with his revenge to destroy Konoha. She doesn't care if the first Okage was her husband, Konoha has turned into a brutal menacing place. Also, Fu was being trained by Danzo but she was just waiting for Naruto to come and destroy everything and he would take her with him. And Fu and Komi have come to an agreement as Fu wanted Komi to be her friend like how Kurama is Naruto's friend. So yeah, that was basically the last part we left off. You guys can switch across and check it out for yourself. So let's start this new episode. We start this episode with Tsunade as Kabuto was also there. I never thought I would say this but Welcome to Konoha Kabuto said Tsunade. Kabuto chuckled at Tsunade's disgusting face when she said that as she looked at him with a disgust look. That's cruel you know, he said. Whatever Tsunade said, we now need to focus on preparing for ourselves for this war. Before Kabuto could speak, Shizune entered the office. Tsunade I, as she stopped immediately as she saw Kabuto in front of Tsunade, Dex, as she had a Look on her face to say what the hell is this guy doing here? Kabuto for his part merely smiled as he waved at Shizune. Before Shizune could react, Tsunade spoke. Before you do anything stupid, yes, I know Kabuto, who was Orochimaru's right hand man, is standing in my office and waving to you like a moron. Kabuto quickly stopped his actions when he heard that. Now, what do you need to tell me? asked Tsunade. Even though she has many questions, she merely trusts her master, so she put them off for now. Well, the council is merely wondering if you would respond to the Kazakage request for a cage meeting. Oh, said Kabuto as he readjusts his glasses. This provides us with an interesting opportunity. Is the sand allied with Naruto? Tsunade asks. Kabuto shook his head. As far as I know, Naruto hasn't stepped a foot in that village. I see, Tsunade muttered relief. What will you do Tsunade? asked Shizune. If the other cages accept, so will I, stated Tsunade. After all, like Kabuta said, this provides us with a perfect opportunity. The other cage will surely agree, said Kabuto. This will also be a perfect chance for Naruto to take you out and leave Konoha without a leader and without a leader the place will crumble. I suggest you ready your army before then. Snade nodded, I see your point. Well, Shizune, you know what to tell them. Shizune nodded and walked out of the office. With the sand siblings as they were walking to the sand, the message must have surely arrived to the other Kages by now. Stated Temari. Gara nodded, yes. 
Now all we have to do is wait for their response. They will have no choice but to response, said Kankuru. After all, it will look bad if the other cages show up and one of them didn't. They all must be thinking about that right now. Wow, said Temaru with white eyes. You actually say something smart for once. Is this a dream? Or you're an imposter? Shut up, Temari. Back at Konoha. Konoha surely has changed, muttered Mito as she was currently standing on top of the first Okage's head. I think we have a situation, said Kushina as she pointed at all the entrance to enter the village. All three Uzumaki could see there was fighting. What the hell was going on? It seems someone is trying to beat us to the punch, commented Mito. As Naruto smirked, well, we can't have that. I suppose we have to show whoever is doing this that they made a mistake. Both Kushina and Mito chuckle as they stood at his sides. Naruto activated his Renegon. Let's go, he said. In the village, civilians ran as they screamed for their life to get in one of the shelters till this nightmare pass. And what nightmare could that be? You may be wondering to yourself. There were dead people coming out of the ground and just attacking everybody they could see. This was doing at every main gate at the village. But the more of them was at the main gate. There we see Shikamaru, Ino, Choji and Lee fighting off the zombies and protecting civilians and also there were no name average Konoha shinobis there. Only problem though that since they were already dead the zombies shrug off any problem or any attack that anyone show at them. This endless fight was draining everyone with their stamina except for Lee who was having the time of his life punching and kicking. Another interesting fact was the ground at each entrance was cracked open like if an earthquake happened as there was a weird rock that had bones, skeleton head and all that on it as a figure stood on top of the rock. Just what the hell is going on out there? Screamed Tsunade in her office as she watched chaos was happening to the village. Kabuta himself was frowning at the moment. This wasn't something that they needed at the moment. They have to prepare themselves for the upcoming cage meeting and the war that Naruto is going to bring towards them. But now they have to deal with this problem. This wasn't the time for some idiot trying to take some petty revenge on Konoha. The revenge they needed to watch out for was from Naruto, not this crap. Kabuta Sai, really. Wonder how this village has not been destroyed yet. It's a quite miracle. As everything that it went through, everyone targeting it. We need to find whoever is behind this and take care of him or her, stated Kabuto. Before Snade could respond, she jumped back from the window as someone break through the glass. The person simply land on her decks. Snade scowled as she stood next to Kabuto. Well it seemed he came to us then, said Kabuto with a smirk. This make things easier. The person who barged in through the window was a young boy, around 16. He had grey hair and he wore what Snade knew was a uniform from the fire temple. He brought out his right arm, which Tsunade and Kabuto noticed was not a regular human arm. What is that? thought both Tsunade and Kabuto. Tsunade Senju, said the boy. Today you will die. Tsunade disappeared in a burst of speed as she reappeared behind the boy. You're way too young to challenge me, brat. Now, mind telling me what you're doing? Or will I have to break every single bone in your body? The boy quickly spin around with his right arm that looked like a monster arm as Snade caught it with a smirk. But that smirk soon turned into a frown as Red Chakra started to leak out of his arm. Snade quickly pulled back her arm as it was burned. He then looked at her before jumping through the window as she walked up the window healing her hand as the boy was jumping away on rooftops. 
What was that? Asked Kabuto as he walked up next to her. I don't know, answered Snavi as she looked at her hand. But I can tell that something isn't right. Both Naruto, Mito and Kushina were on a rooftop as they were watching all the commotion that was happening in the village. Zombies? Kushina said uncertainly. Mito nodded. It would appear so. Naruto didn't say a word as Mito looked at both of them. Do you two have any idea what the hell is going on? Naruto shrugged. Hell if I know. I think I would have remembered someone that can bring people back as zombies. Kushina shook her head. If Naruto doesn't know, then it's less likely that I would know. Mito sighed. Then, we have to find them then. Oi, brat, said Kurama. What is it? Someone here. As my chakra. What? Naruto asked, with narrowed eyes. Yes, but whoever this person is, has no control whatsoever. I feel my consciousness trying to take form and escape. So, I think we should personally capture this person and take it back, said Kurama. I agree with you on that, said Naruto. I have found them, said Mito, as she opened her eyes. Where to? asked Naruto. There is one nearby, but something is odd about him, responded Mito. What is that? asked Kushina. Mito frowned at her answer. If I'm not mistaken, I feel the Kayubi's chakra within him. That's him, said Naruto with a smirk as he caught sight of the person jumping from rooftop to rooftops. Naruto then blinked away. In a dark flash, as Mito had a curious look on her face, did he just disappear in a dark flash? She asked Kushina. Kushina nodded, yes, although I'm not certain how it exactly worked but it doesn't require any seals. Now that is interesting, muttered Mito with a smirk as Naruto appeared in front of the boy. The boy launched his arm, get out of my way, but Naruto simply dodged and fixed him in his stomach as Naruto slammed the boy's face into the wall. He got him, said both Kushina and Mito as they both went over to Naruto. Naruto picked up the boy that was struggling to get himself out of the wall as Naruto held him by the throat. The boy scowled in anger as Red Chakra started to leak out of his entire body this time. Oh, said Naruto with a raised eyebrow. So you do possess Kurama's Chakra, but I am sorry to say that won't work on me as Naruto started to absorb the Chakra. The boy now had a panic look on his face. How? He managed to ask. Naruto merely shrugged. Unlike you, I am used to this chakra and I can use it properly. He smirked again as the absorbed chakra started to appear around him and the head of Kurama appeared next to him. And there is also the fact that the real owner of this chakra prefers me over you. He held the boy's throat even harder, causing the boy to cough. What's your name anyway? asked Naruto. Sora, the boy managed to say. And how did you get the chakra in the first place? I don't know. I was born with it, he said, as Naruto was holding his throat. I see, Naruto said to himself. Well, I guess this is the end for you, Sora, Naruto said as he crushed the boy's throat and threw him off the building. Oh yes, that feel good, Naruto chuckled, as he then realized that both Mito and Kushina were gone. Did they both ditch me? He said with a twitching eyebrow. It seems so, said Kurama. But look at it this way. Now we don't have anyone to tell us what to do. You're right, Naruto said that smirk. As he pulled out a seal and unsealed a sword. I haven't used this in a long time. He said with a big smile on his face. And with that, he jumped down to the street below and started to slice everyone down. No matter if they were a zombie, a civilian, or a shinobi. In Konoha there was a man with a long staff with white hair as he was in the forest. It won't take long for Sora to return and then I will summon my team members to use that jutsu. The man said the smirk on his face. We have company said a beautiful redhead leaning on the tree trunk. The man glanced to the village as he saw two other redheads walking towards him. 
What do we have here? He thought to himself. Mito and Kushina walked up as the man jumped out of the tree as the other redhead appeared next to his side. Mito looked at the man that bored look and then looked at the redhead beside him. Now this is interesting. Thought Mito, could she be? May I help you two ladies? Asked the man with a smile. No you can't, said Mito coldly. You are merely a hindrance. No, you're lower than that. The man narrowed his eyes at that. Do you know who I am, woman? I am Firudo, the man who will let the land of fire reach its full potential. Don't you talk to me that way. And the only way to do that is to destroy Konoha, the man said another smile on his face. Even though I share your sentiment about Konoha, said Mito, but you're a fool and an annoyance. Now die. Fyodor was ready to bring his staff up to block any attack from Mito, but his arms couldn't move. What the hell is this? What is going on? Why can't I move my body? Mito chuckled as she saw the expression on the man's face. You really talk too much, you know that, as she brought her hands up to a ram sign. Firudo, what's wrong? asked the redhead beside him as she was about to help him, but then she found out that she herself couldn't move. You will stay there, said Mito, glancing at her. Kushina, for her part, was staring at the scene in awe. She could now see what Mito did to the both of them, and it shocked her to her core. Just when did she have the time to construct this seal? Kushina wondered. As she gazed at the pattern of the seal, surrounded both of them. It stopped movement, paralyzed whoever is inside. She thought as she glanced at Mito. She really is a master when it comes to sealing jutsu. Mito then pulled out a kunai from her sleeve of her kimono. Well, this is for you, she said to Fyodo, as she threw it and it hit the man right in the head, dead on, killing him as his body fell to the ground. So the seal doesn't apply to someone who's dead, realizing Kushina. As Mito then turned to the woman, May I ask you who you are? Asked Mito. The woman narrowed her eyes, and why should I tell you anything? You're just going to kill me. Mito simply shrugged. Well, I wouldn't kill my family, said Mito, as Kushina's eyes widened. The woman laughed. Oh, that's a good one. You, my family. Oh, that's the most stupid. As she then stopped, as she saw the seriousness in Mito's eyes. I will stop talking if I were you, said Mito, or less, I will simply kill you. All right, the woman said. I guess there is nothing to lose. My name is Fuka. Mito nodded, I see. Then mind telling me why you are following that idiot, Mito asked, pointing at the man's dead body. Fuka nodded. The truth? She then shrugged. It's because I was bored. There was nothing for me to do before he asked me to join him. So I figured that following him would keep me out of my boredom. But that dream of his, I don't really care about anything like that. I just wanted some thrill, something to make me stay lively and excited. As she then chuckled, so what now? Are you going to kill me? Mito smirk, of course not. Because you have just passed, she responded as a seal formula on the ground disappeared. Fuka then moved her arm as she realized that she could move again. I don't know what you mean by passing, but something tell me that you're not doing something idiotic like what he was up to. Mito nodded, that's correct. And considering that this involves your heritage as well, you're going to want to be part of this. Fuka frowned. What do you mean? Are you an orphan? Asked Mito. Fuka nodded. Yes, I am. As long as I could remember, I was an orphan. And then I was sold to be a sex trade. After that, I work and I work. So I be could become strong and not rely on anyone. I see, said Mito. So you have never wondered who your parents were or where you come from. Fuka shrugged. Nah, I never think about something like that.
You can't miss something you never had. Mito smile, I respect that. But I can tell you exactly where you're from and why did you become an orphan? Oh, said Fuka, please enlighten me. You're an Uzumaki, said Mito. As Mito then went on to tell Fuka all about the Uzumakis and their special lives in sealing jutsu and their ability to live long as well and their striking red hair. As Mito then went on to tell her everything about what Konoha and the rest of the village did and wiped out the entire Uzumaki clan. As Fuka stood there for a while taking in all of the new information as she then spoke while I thank you for telling me all of this I already told you that it doesn't matter where I came from it doesn't concern me not including the fact that they killed your parents retorted Mito Fuka's eyes widened at that how would you know if my parents were killed or not Mito smile Fuka the same name I gave you Fuka's eyes widened at that and so did Kushina who was listening the entire time. What crap are you speaking now? Asked Fuka. I traveled to our village after the attack. Explained Mito and there I tried to find any survivors and I found you. Your parents were laying around you as it seemed like they protected you. I am still not sure how you survived but I didn't care at that time. I took you but I couldn't bring you back to Konoha so I left you in an orphanage with specific orders to take care of you. It wasn't till later when I was in my death bed that I found out that you were sold. But by then I couldn't do anything anymore. That was my biggest mistake said Mito as she lowered her head and I am sorry for that. Fuka from this point couldn't stand anymore as she was kneeling and looking down as she couldn't describe what she was feeling at the moment you you saved me but guys gonna be in this episode right here if you want to see the next part of this you already know what to do like subscribe comment down below and turn on that bell notification stay posted and remember after this i'm gonna be doing what if naruto got a new bloodline and also on my main channel tonight i will be doing what if Tsunade was naruto's mother so go ahead and check that out and enjoy and I'm going to be doing what if Kurama gave Naruto a dojutsu so stay in tune for that also and after that I'm going to be doing what if Naruto was trained to be a mercenary so stay in tune for that as well and thank you for all of your support and help and without further ado I'm out for now peace